What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, I don't exactly know how I'm going to be doing my streams today because I was going to go ahead and live stream Battlefield 2042 exactly when it launches at midnight. But I think it's going to be launching at 3 in the morning. But regardless, I will be playing Vanguard through the beginning of this day over on my live streams. If you guys want to check that out, the link to my live streams are down in the description. I do it over on Twitch. So we'll be starting off with Vanguard, but possibly, very possibly, we'll be streaming at midnight if the game decides to launch. If the game launches at midnight, we'll play for about an hour or two we'll live streaming, give our first initial impressions. If it doesn't release at midnight, if it releases at 3 in the morning, it's going to be no live stream, and I'm just going to record at 3 in the morning and, you know, get my video ready for the next day. But don't worry, guys. If it doesn't get released tonight, tomorrow, 110%, we're going to be streaming Battlefield 2042 all day long. I am super pumped to finally give this game a try. But ladies and gentlemen, like I just said literally a second ago, I am so pumped to grind out Battlefield 2042. What I played in the beta, I know a lot of people had problems with. But for me personally, if you push aside all the bugs and glitches and all the problems and balancing issues, I saw such an outstanding game packed behind all of that crap. And honestly, every single second I put into this game, I had a blast. Even with the obnoxious AR meta and the, like I said, the bugs and glitches, you know, conquering over the whole game. Like I said, down to the core, I just had a really good time playing with a full squad of friends, buddies, running around, dishing out some sauce, having a blast. It's your typical Battlefield game. It really does give you those really fantastic moments. But one thing that I've been saying for a very long time is no matter how much work and effort DICE puts into this game, at the end of the day, if EA decides to do anything stupid, that's going to be able to take down the full game, regardless of how good it actually is. We've seen it multiple times with Activision and Call of Duty. The devs will put in tons of work and effort into their title, but just because the publisher says, oh, you know what, we want thick skill based matchmaking. Oh, you know what, we don't want to upgrade the servers, we're just going to keep these very cheap servers for the uh, developers to work on. When all of these things are being dictated by publishers, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much work and effort you put into the game, you know, if they're not going to put the money forward to make sure everything is good, then the publishers will be the downfall of that specific title. And here we are with Battlefield 2042. Like I said, DICE is doing a phenomenal job. They're active with their community. They're talking to us. They're doing a really, really, really great job, in my personal opinion. And I know everybody's going to say, JB, all you do is switch your opinion. Oh, my God. Knock it off. I love the title memes. Trust me. I love seeing what, what titles some of you guys come up with. But, Lord have mercy. If you genuinely think that I changed my opinions multiple times about Battlefield 2042, I don't know what to tell you. Literally every single video, I've pretty much said the same exact thing with the same exact opinion. But back to what I was saying. I have complete faith in DICE that they know what they're doing and they know how to develop this game, polish it off, and make sure it's good for launch and basically good for the rest of the community. But the problem, like I just said, is how is EA going to handle things? Not only with the servers and stuff like that, but how are they going to handle the microtransactions? How are they going to handle the seasons? How are they going to handle the content? That is one of the biggest factors right now for this game that a lot of people are stressed out about, knowing that it's only 22 weapons in the base version of the game. And yes, as we all know, yeah, sure, there's Portal, there's Hazard Zone, and Portal's going to have Battlefield 1942, Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, all the weapons, characters, maps, and stuff like that remastered and brought into the game. There's going to be so much content to go ahead and play around with. So yeah, when All Out Warfare, All Out War gets boring, we have a bunch of stuff to hop back on. You know, Portal and Hazard Zone are going to be perfect for that. But when it comes to the core purpose of this game. When you spend $60, the majority of that money is going towards the all-out warfare experience. That is the new vibe of the game. Yes, Portal's awesome, but it's just a bunch of classics being brought back, which is a great move. I think Call of Duty should do the same exact thing for their next game. Just in case their game is a flop, they'll have all the classics right there that you can mess around with and edit and make to your own liking. But like I said, even though Portal's there's backup, the main selling point of this game is supposed to be the all-out warfare. Just like how when you buy Battlefield 5, you buy it for the Battlefield 5's multiplayer. Just like how you buy Battlefield 1, you bought it for Battlefield 1's multiplayer. Yes, there's going to be side modes here and there, but when you purchase a new Battlefield game, you purchase it for the new experience. And a lack of content will sadly get kind of boring. But there has been a statement that has just been released over on Twitter. If you guys don't follow me over there, like I always say in the link in the description, there is links to all of my socials. Make sure you guys check out all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and line this up and read it for you guys just so you know what the plans are for the future of Battlefield 2042. Now, I'm going to put this up on the screen here. It says, what to expect after launch? Launch is only the beginning. 
We're taking a new approach to live service with not only a commitment to new content, but a goal of enhancing the Battlefield experience through seasons that will continue to evolve the world of Battlefield 2042. In our first year of live service, we'll deliver four seasons with four battle passes, four new specialists, and new locations along with more fresh content. We also intend to deliver updates to Battlefield Portal that will give players more ways to build and share new Battlefield experiences with the world. That means, for Season 1, you can expect new specialists, Battle Pass, and Portal content, of course, and maybe even some more new sites to see as the story of Battlefield 2042 continues to unfold. Expect more details early next year year. During launch, we'll also kick off the preseason with weekly missions and rewards, limited time moods, featured creator spotlights and experiences, and Battlefield Portal and more. Now yeah, this is a lot of good information, but the one thing that I really wanted to point out here that a lot of people also noticed is that expect more details about the seasonal systems and stuff like that early next year, meaning that we're not going to see anything being added into this game until 2022. Now, to be honest with you guys, I can understand where a lot of you are coming from with the anger towards this exact statement, you know, especially since a lot of people are purchasing this game, like I said before, for specifically Battlefield 2042, brand new content, people want to make sure that All Out Warfare has stuff to play with, they want it to last, and even though there is going to be a lot of people who are just buying this game for Portal or just buying this game for Hazard Zone, you have to be respectful to the rest of the crowd. There is a ton of people, probably the majority, the mass majority of people are purchasing this game for Battlefield 2042. And when I say massive, I'm not talking about, you know, us communities out here on YouTube and Twitch. No, I'm talking about the casual community. Just like how Call of Duty, we keep complaining about certain things, but it never gets fixed. Because again, we are not the majority when it comes to the voice. There is a massive population of casual players out there who dump money into these video games, who don't give a living crap about the news behind it. So again, just like with Call of Duty, there's going to be people here who are buying this game specifically for the core game. Just like back in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, you know, it was Modern Warfare or Master that. It got launched with that game, which was great. I loved playing Modern Warfare Remastered. Just like Portal, you know, it's an old school classic. It's a blast in the past. It's great to see stuff return to the game with upgraded graphics and fun gameplay. But again, Infinite Warfare was still the newer game. And even though a massive majority of the community still stepped aside and only played Modern Warfare Remastered because they don't want the new game, there's still a ton of casuals out there who make up way more of the population than we do when it comes to the Call of Duty community who purchased the game for Infinite Warfare and still gave the game millions of dollars, making it still a top seller in the Call of Duty franchise despite Infinite Warfare being one of the most hated COD games. You see what I'm trying to say here? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what side mode is in the game or what remaster they bring back. People want the core experience to be good. So when people see that content is not coming until next year and we only have 22 weapons and 7 maps and a handful of specialists to you know, start off at launch, people are going to be a little irritated. But this is going to be my take on this whole situation because I don't think we should be worried here, nor do I think anybody should be angry. Honestly, I didn't expect them to even have any content drops within the next couple of months here, to be honest with you guys. It's just like Call of Duty again. They come out in seasons. It's going to be in the same formula. This game is going to have, what, I think they said four battle passes. It's going to, you know, span across, like, what, a few months, three to four months each one with a new season pass and all that stuff. Same exact thing as Call of Duty. And when a new Call of Duty game launches, just like here, how a new Battlefield game launches, there's going to be the preseason where it's going to be content and, you know, updates and stuff like that, and they're going to be trying to polish off the game. But the actual season of the game doesn't start until the year prior. And I'm okay with that because I think the initial day, we should be more worried about making sure the game is polished off and fun because yes, we have been told that there's going to be you no know, virtually no bugs and stuff like that. But again, you know, that's thinking very optimistic for this game, you know? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's still Battlefield. There's going to be problems. There's going to be issues. There's going to be a lot of work set out in front of the whole community if we want this game to turn out good. And also, we don't even know the balancing of the game yet. We don't know what weapons are overpowered, if any are completely broken or busted. The vehicles, we don't know how the vehicles are going to be balanced out between helicopters, tanks, everything in the game. If the maps are going to be working properly, if there's going to be completely bugged out or anything. We don't want to have to get into the game. Over half of the weapons are broken. And then they're already adding more weapons on top of those. And we haven't even polished off the current weapons that we need to work with. You know what I'm saying? I think currently right now, even though we don't have as much content as we want, I think it'll be good to take our time with it. And I know I just talked against this, but like I just said, we still have Portal and stuff like that to hold us over. Now, I don't want Portal to be the main point for this game at all times. You know, I wanted to be popular. I wanted to blow up and I want the Battlefield community to go crazy and make their own personal game modes. But I still want to see the core experience of Battlefield 2042 succeed. 
But for the time being, I think it will be very handy to have Portal because while we don't have that much content at launch, hopefully with the additional Portal we can, you know, have 50 plus weapons, all those vehicles, all those maps, and it will add a little bit more extra oomph to the gameplay of this title to make it last until next year when we can finally get that initial content drop for the core game. But again, we're at the hands of EA right now. This is all in their control. You know, Battlefield 5, it needed a ton of work. It needed a lot of stuff done. But at the end of the day... What really gave it a horrible push in the beginning was no content. And then after waiting months for content, we got a singular map. It was awful. Again, like I just said, EA screwed the game. While DICE is there working extremely hard on trying to work on performance and making sure everything is good, EA, they're the ones who won't give us anything. So if they follow that same formula as Battlefield 5, especially with less content by default in this game at launch, it's going to be really rough. No matter how much work DICE decides to put into Battlefield 2042 or how polished it is or anything, nobody's going to get this game for the core experience at that point. If it stays dead like this, the only thing people are going to play is Hazard Zone, maybe, but the mostly just Portal. It's going to be an old school Battlefield fans game, and pretty much every new person that's trying to come into the Battlefield franchise is going to be completely turned off by the lack of content, and a lot of people who don't know about a lot of the classic Battlefield games probably won't even get into Portal, so uh, it's some problems I'm thinking of, but at the end of the day, I want to stay positive and I want to have faith that this whole situation is going to be perfectly fine, because there's already rumored to be about seven to eight weapons per content drop, so I'm going to roughly take that down to like maybe six weapons, just in case, you know, that's the high end. I think six is a nice medium point. And then you're going to have that times four. So, you know, that's going to be what you get for a year, along with, I guess, a couple of maps every drop with, you know, a specialist or so. We're going to have to see how this content drop works. But as long as they give us something to keep us pushing and having a good time, along with other content drops in Portal, if they bring back other games like Battlefield 1 and, you know, all these other, like, Hardline or something like that, that would be so badass. Truly, this game could be one of the best Battlefield games we have ever seen in the world. It just depends on how much effort EA is going to put in to making sure the content is good. There's a lot of people out there think DICE is in control of all the content, which is true. They get to choose probably the maps that are going to be brought back into the game, along with the community who's, you know, making it their fan favorites and stuff like that. They choose the weapons and all the content they get to choose. But the people who choose how much of that content is EA because they're the ones who are trying to make money off of this whole game. And their ways of making money is through the Battle Pass system, the seasons. And if they give too much content, they might be losing money. And if they give too little content, they might be losing players. You see what I'm saying here? EA is in control of all that crap. And if they handle it incorrectly, this whole game could tumble downhill. But at the end of the day, I just want to show you guys this news so everybody knows that there's going to be basically no new content coming into the game until 2022. I'm assuming very early on, probably January, February, maybe. We're going to, have to see what date they exactly choose. But just know that there's not going to be too much going on, but we still have a ton of stuff to play around with. And personally, I think I'm going to be having an absolute blast. I do think I will get bored from the weapon choices and weapon options, but I hope and pray to God that Portal will push me through to the final end because obviously there's so much variety in that game mode as well. But ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave like buttons. I hate it. Leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat with me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and Discord. Both those links are down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streaming some video games, I do over on Twitch. Link that is in the description as well. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace out.